Okay, guys, reassembly time. Up she goes. Oh, you got the hose yeah. for the, oh, the dipstick. Dip tube. <laughs> we talked about this. Uh, yeah. Dipstick, huh? What <laughs> oh, a dipstick. Hilarious. All right, putting the bolts back in the hard to reach areas, right? Take two. Take two. By hand. There you go. Get yeah, she start. started. Oh, yeah. Okay, stay. Okay, so all the bolts are in. Torque converter bolts now. Torque converter bolts. Yeah, so they came with a, some type of blue Loctite already on them. And we're just doing a little dab of fresh stuff. Just a little dab for good luck. Yes. For good measure. That's right. Anti knock. <laughs> Anti knock. I don't like knocks on my truck or knocking up women. <laughs> I try to avoid it all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're a good laugh at it, yeah. <laughs> it's expensive. <laughs> yeah, and you get lack of sleep. That's what Andrew says. What's this technique called? Um, <laughs> is the proper name for this? It's Jim. like a spark plug. Essentially, what I do for spark plugs. We need more paper. Yeah. Trying to create a wedge, guys, because we don't want to drop the torque converter bolts into the bell housing. That would be trying to fish it out, you never know. And then the excess paper dampens knocks. Yeah, that's right, anti-knock paper. <laughs> Should we just put some insulation in there, get the spray foam, fill the whole cavity. <laughs> and get the first torque converter bolt. Well, we found my long lost socket. Yeah, we didn't really document that, but uh, <laughs> a socket fell into the bell housing when we're trying to put the first torque converter bolt on. Found that one, and now we're on what, bolt number four. Bolt number four, bolt number that's four. right. So what was the genius idea that we're doing now? We're stuffing a rag in the bell housing so we don't drop more shit down there, although I did not do it on this bolt. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> Don't let go of your fingers, yo. It's gonna be loud. <laughs> yeah, so uh, losing the socket was like as much time as the pull of trannies, essentially. <laughs> so don't do that, guys. Try to figure out a system. You're just trying to do the socket by hand, actually. Yeah, I was just trying to get the bolt started. Yeah, to get the thread started, yeah. Let's stuff that rag in there that we were talking yeah, about. Yeah, so. You know, treat your truck right, put a rag in. <laughs> and, uh. Can you just rotate the crank a little bit? in the bell housing for anti-knock purposes. Okay, I'm gonna rotate her. Okay, one sec, hold my hand back up there. Okay, go ahead. And, whoa, <laughs> keep going. Easy there. <laughs> Get a little hop. Get a little fast on the hop. Oh, right there. Leave her right there, that's perfect. All right, last one. Number six. Number six. Did you grease everything up on that side, Matt? Oh. Update, Andrew. Uh, all the torque converter bolts are in and tight. Now we're reinstalling the awkward starter. Oh yeah, that's right, starter time. Yeah, starter time. Exhaust hanger brackets going on. Andrew, you have to plug in the sensor. Adjusting the pipe to get to fit. I figure I'd mention to everybody while I noticed this, this is the ground below the driver's door. See guys, driver's door. And so 
when I first put my vehicle into four low, I would get the code and you know, sometimes it wouldn't switch to low, it would just stay in high and give you, you know, Andrew, there's a little code they throw up uh, on the... Ah, uh, yeah, service four wheel drive, I'll say. Yeah, service four wheel drive. And then I'm like, oh shit. So I started researching and I found on a YouTube video where a guy explained that one of the fixes for that at the dealership, you know, it's like they just go and clean the ground and then it fixes it, you know, and then, you know, who knows what the dealership charges their customer. But, uh, so I did that, I had that exact fault I took it off, I, you can see I ground this whole area down, it's forming a little bit of rust again, and it absolutely fixed that service fault, and now it goes into four low and back to four high and drive, and no issues since then. So, good little tip along the way, guys. Just the tip. Just the, just the tip. Okay, Andrew, uh, both our backs are sore. Figuring out the direction of the gasket. Oh, it's got a little tab, huh? Good old tab, but I don't know where the hell it lands. <laughs> Just keep trying every position. There she goes. Yeah, there's the, and that's where the drive shaft goes in. No dowel on this one? No. No, she's got oh, studs. Got studs. Yeah, she's got studs. Nipple rings? <laughs> She's got some studs. Studding for winter. That's good. That's okay. You're okay? Yeah, I'm good. Get a nut started. Oh, hello. All right, thank you. We might have a retain actually retaining clip waiting around somewhere. Where was that? I saw it. A missing retainer clip moving around. Yeah. I might have one actual one. Little plastic ones that hook on and. Well, hook. it's a it's just a plastic two uh, metal tangs that go. Yeah. Here. All right, so now we got the front drive shaft going into the transfer case. <laughs> yeah, goes in a little rubber boot. Well, it's not going in the boot. I don't know. The fuck? There's not a master on this, is there? Yeah, Andrew, on this harness, is there one black wire that's just longer than the rest? Uh, okay. Crank sensor and the oil pressure sensor there? Matt? Zep strap. Yeah. Good one. Probably is a fun, but metal came off of it. Yeah. yeah so that cinches up, and then you. Uh, Please. And then you can tighten it even more. Of course, you know it's just rubber. You don't need it that tight, but it's a neat little tool. To. Yeah, I remember it was tough on my street, the dirt bike, with the using it on the, the wrap. The rear shaft in. Start the day with pulling my shaft, finish the day with pulling my shaft. Yeah, while you're putting the shaft back. <laughs> Here we are. Tools away. That's right, guys. Of course, my name is Marcel Ernie. This is Andrew Gull. We're at Williams Automotive Kelowna. 
The Duramax is done. Transfer case, drive shaft, everything is back together. New uh, Suncoast Diesel flex plate, billet flex plate for the LMM, along with the Suncoast Diesel 1800 RPM low stalled triple 3D billet torque converter. And unfortunately, the stock flex plate does not show any cracks, so if it stops knocking, it will just be like a random blessing. Maybe it's the torque converter, the OEM one, who knows? I can only only hope. Let's hope, guys. Let's hope it's just magical. It'll be just magic. Right, Andrew? Magic. Magic, magic. <laughs> Otherwise, I don't know where to go from here. Oh, the sun! Yeah! Like seriously, the injectors, balance rates were fine. You know, I did have some codes when I threw it on my buddy's uh, thing. We saw some some pump codes, which I put in the last documentary. But again, we got uh, desired pressure um, from the CP3 pump, so I don't know what those codes are and why it would not. We just love our engines and our toys, huh? It's like so sick. Good. Damn, look at the shot I guys. You give me like the throttle. Andrew, yeah. it's not knocking right now, dude. Yeah, <laughs> well, you know, you know how that is though. It's intermittent. Nope. It never knocks in front of me anyways. Un unless you disengage an injector. <laughs> I would guess. Because they're not all bad. And it throws all your balance in between up to one, can you? Up one and disabled. And number eight, which is what we're suspecting the top one. And you can't disconnect two at the same time. No, just one at a time. Uh, Pretty much need to figure out where the sound's coming from. Dude, it's, it's sounding good right now. But of course, it's in a warm shop, too. And this here we guys got the original OEM torque converter. And then you put it in a bag, you ship it back for the core charge. Transmission related escape. Here's a code codes. One, transmission fluid pressure, transmission fluid pressure, control system, no escape, we'll just clear these out. Race codes. Alright, we lost the check engine light. Alright, we're right to the bottom of the pool. Fifteen eighty three hours. Uh, it's still knocking. In fact, the knock has changed a little bit. Sounds a little different now. Or right here. Right, inside pass line. Inside, but get, get on the throttle. Here we go! Oh! Shit! You fucking asshole! Here we are, guys. Yeah. 
good, eh? We're gonna have the cold section. I'll check it in the morning, right? It's like knocking. <laughs> it's like worse now. Ah, <laughs> uh, just like bah, bah. It was a disaster. Just like my hair right now. Holy shit. settles down. It's when I first stop. Whoa, bus in front of me. Yeah, you can hear it when bouncing off the car next to me. It's at high speed. Go though, the truck runs good. It's freaking ridiculous. I don't have much ground clearance here. Look at the snow. like the bottom end. I don't know. Something. It's like something in there. The back of the bottom end. In here. And in there. Yeah, it's quieter. It's right in the in the bottom end. I think it's in the bottom end. Right now, that's what it's doing, right? It's still weird. The oil analysis is perfect. There's no abnormal wear. Holy shit. You know, so then... And through the whole damn engine. So right now, it's just in reverse, guys. To load off the engine. Park. And the sound is gone. Ugh, so messed up. So messed up. Anyways, guys, my name is Marcel Ernie. If you have any idea what this is, keep in mind the oil analysis shows I've done five with this oil, and the oil's viscosity is out of 40 weight SAE, and the additives are fine. The oil is fine for continued use. There's no abnormal rise in wear level. The wear level has not risen from the metals of the engine. So it can't be a spun bearing. That would create excessive wear. The balance rates have been checked. They're all like the most one that is like 3% plus 3% one of them. They're all fine and it's tested a couple different times. Under load, under driving, etc. Even driving they don't go too far out of whack. So. Anyways, this is an LMM 2009. started the truck when it was cold I noticed the knock was like knock 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 and knock 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 it would have like a varying pattern which would 
indicate that it's not necessarily based on the engine speed 100%. Okay, this morning I took off the inner fender here on the left and I'm looking for soot around the injectors. There it is. Doesn't appear to have much of anything going on. That's the back driver's side, so one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's number eight. Gonna be pure AMS oil going in that fuel now. It's running quiet, huh, guys? Nope, clean. Again, just full of these two things: injector cleaner and C-Tain. Running just on those. 